let me tell you something, brother. The first thing you need to realize, dude, is that this Q&A is all about the almighty Hulkster, brother, brother. Oh, brother. He's getting the title shot at Bound for Glory, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. We haven't done one of these yet. And to be fair, we did one about John Cena and CM Punk. We did three about Triple H. So I think it's okay to do one about the almighty Hulkster at this point in time. There'll probably be another one at some point in time down the road, but this is just one of them. All right, let's get going here, brother. Um, at Gail Tyler LP, if Hogan had one more match in TNA to put over, <laughs> put over a young talent, <laughs> who should he put over and why? I will go with Matt Morgan. They actually have a storyline reason to have a match. Who's the biggest star that Hogan never faced that he should have, Mark? Are we talking about TNA or just in anywhere, general? Anywhere. Probably Steve Austin. That would be the one that stands out the most. At Sabu213, at SummerSlam, if HBK was unhappy about the outcome, shouldn't he still have had a responsibility to go out there and put on a good match? You know, I know he kind of flopped around in that moments in that match, acted like a little bitch, but that still ended up being a very good match. It was. Think. Yeah, so... I mean, I think ultimately, even though Sean was pissed and he wanted to prove a point, he still ultimately did the right thing, and he was at least somewhat professional by the time the match was over. So that was a good match. At We Are Pro Wrestling, if Vern went with Hogan as his champion and number one guy, would the AWA still be in existence today? Ooh. I don't know if it would. I don't know if they'd still be in existence, but they would have lasted a lot longer than they did. You would hope. You would hope, anyway. Yeah, um... I'm kind of, kind of with Mark on that one. I don't know if they would have still been around today, but uh, it wouldn't have hurt them. They probably would have lasted a little longer. And McBrad's 95. Instead of Rock at Mania 18 and McMahon at 19, should Hogan have faced Austin at 18, Rock at 19, and McMahon at 20? Yes. Yeah. If, if you could go back in the time machine and say an ideal world, that's what I would want to have at those three manias, but it didn't happen that way. Add Awesome underscore Leopard. What's your favorite Hogan movie apart from No Holds Barred? Favorite... Ah, da, 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 da. We'll go with Rocky Three. That works. Otherwise, Suburban Commando is an American classic. Mr. Nanny, can you say, you know, they talk about all this Meltzer stuff with the five star matches? No, 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 no. What five stars originally referenced was Hogan's movies because they were all five stars. Anyways, <laughs> at Blue Goblin Zero One. What if Hogan did a run-in at WrestleMania 17 to start the invasion angle? Where would he do the run-in? How about Austin Dur Austin versus Rock? Uh, how about that? That would have fucking been monstrous. That would have been one of the most awesome things ever to have Hogan sit there and do a run-in. Austin versus Rock and freaking McMahon is out there and all of a sudden here comes Hogan. I mean, you want to talk about the colossal egos in the ring for that fucking moment. Ooh, baby! I would pay a hundred bucks just to see that. Anyways, at MBFCC22, what WrestleMania match with Hogan would you most want to see? Hogan versus Austin um, or Hogan versus Taker? Well, we already saw Hogan versus Taker, so I would have loved to have seen Hogan against Austin. At a Mania, Hogan versus Austin, correct. That would have been the match of matches. At X Little Nick 365, what do you think of Hogan's run in TNA so far? Oh, it's been interesting to say the least. It's been very much an ebb and flow thing. Uh, 2010 was horrible. 2011 was plenty bad enough. It looked like 2012, yeah, things were getting better, and the company was going to be in, on the path to good things in 2013, and then, uh, yeah, then it hasn't happened. It's been very much a mixed bag, to be frank with you. Um, you know, I think it's one of those deals where Dixie's, God bless her, she loves the business, but she's also a very big mark for the business and just a very big mark in general, and I think sometimes what happens is she thinks that Hogan, just by name association, is automatically going to keep the ship afloat. Sure, he has an impact in terms of licensing, in terms of merchandising, um, in terms of having a mainstream name attached with your product, but um, in terms of him making that much of a difference, he really hasn't. Just being realistic here. I mean, what new massive stars have been created since Hogan and Bischoff got there over three years ago? Nothing. 
I mean, real big, massive star. No, can't think of one. Yeah, I mean, if you even have one to say like Rude and Aries, well, they're freaking in the tag team division right now. Um, at Motorhead 94, do you think Hogan will ever get a second Hall of Fame ring as part of the NWO? He should. Probably. If if Flair got it for the Horseman, Hogan deserves it for the NWO, no question. At Retro Kaiser, did you ever watch a sex tape? And if you did, how was it? No, no reason to watch the sex tape because just like WWE's booking today, it's very predictable. I can tell you exactly what was going to happen. Hulk Hogan wasn't going to be on his back for more than two seconds at a time, brother. He was going to be on top. And he was ultimately going to go over, brother. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. That, that, so why even need to watch it? Don't need to watch it. Besides, it would probably make us very jealous. Uh, Javier Lartao, what do you think about Hogan's promo before his strap match with Flair at 2000 at WCW? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most bizarre fucking promos of all time is a yappa pie. <laughs> what the fuck is a yappa pie? <laughs> Anyways, oh Christ! At Rock of Fools, if the NWO was in the WWE and Rock and Austin were in WCW during the Monday Night Wars, uh, what would have been the ultimate result? I think is the question. Um, Oof. Well, it probably depends on how it was barked. Probably still ultimately would have had WWE come out on top, and I'll try to say that just to kiss their ass. But the fact of the matter is, is the machinery. Behind the scenes was better. Uh, the brain power behind the scenes ultimately was better, uh, and they just had more desire to win and do the work necessary to win in the WWF as opposed to WCW. So, uh, Rock and Austin. You know, to be fair, they had Austin. They didn't. They never had Rock, but they had Austin. They had Austin. They never knew. They didn't know what to do with them. They had Triple H, and they didn't know what to do with them. They had Undertaker, and they didn't know what to do with them. They had Foley when he was Cactus Jack, and they never really knew what to do with them. So a lot of the guys that Vince ended up getting, and they became big stars and helped his company overtake them, uh, they, WCW, had them first. So uh, the thought of Rock and Austin going over there and WCW winning is just ridiculous because Austin was fucking over there just a few years before. Okay, next up we've got Disco Ben has a couple of questions for us in reference to Hogan. Uh, who was Hogan's best opponent? Hogan's best opponent? Hmm, oh, gosh. I, th I think it's got to be Mr. Wonderful. But that, that's an obvious But that, that yeah, you, got, you do get a point there. You can take him, though. You take the easy one. I'll take Andre the Giant. Because, uh, I frankly, when it came to uh, Hogan... I mean, nobody ever made it seem like it was more likely Hogan could lose than Andre. So. Uh, what's one thing you wish Hogan didn't do? Hmm. The first two years he was in WCW, before his heel turn. Oh, God. That fucking, uh, when he's wearing the black mask, he's in the fucking green. <laughs> I was also going to say Thunder in Paradise, just in general. I, 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 was, I was thinking about that, too. <laughs> Those are just a couple of things that I wish he wouldn't have done. Huh. How about that fight with the giant on top of the roof of Cobo Hall or whatever? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> As he would say, it was awesome. Must see television. Uh, let's see here. At Air Guitar Skills, is Booker T still coming for Hulk Hogan? Fuck Yes. All these years later, they want the gold, sucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing about that is, that's one of the most watched wrestling-related clips on YouTube of all time. And it's legendary. And, you know, at least Booker T seems to, over the years, have had a great sense of humor about it. That shit's funny. I watched that at least once or twice a month. And when I mean I watched it, I'll watch it, and then I'll keep watching it like several times in that few minutes. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. oh, Charlie, what would wrestling be like today if there was never a Hulk Hogan? Well, we'd probably, no, it wouldn't, wouldn't have near the significance that, that it does. 
might not even be national. We still might be looking at a territorial aspect. The business could have died off, except for like at the small local level. Somebody else could have come along, maybe like Ted Turner at WCW, and uh, maybe they would have been the supreme power. I don't know. But without a Hulk Hogan, it's hard to venture a guess. I mean, I always, I, I believe that the three biggest things are like the three best things and you could ultimately say as well the three worst things that ever happened to the wrestling business that I could think of would you would say Vince McMahon you would probably say Hulk Hogan and you could probably say either Ted Turner or pay-per-views those are the three best things and maybe also on the flip side the three worst things that ever happened in the business um, but imagining it without Hulk Hogan I don't, I don't know if he can at WWE Galaxy what was your reaction to Hulk Hogan body slam and Andre the Giant, and how do you think it impacted pro wrestling? My reaction as a kid when I found out about it, uh, you know, that Hogan actually could beat Andre the Giant, I mean, that was the moment there, and that was the one. I had already gotten into wrestling. I was watching wrestling. I was a Hogan guy, but I was also watching AWA at the time. Um, but when that happened, that, that made me a wrestling fan for life. And I know for a lot of other people, it made them wrestling fans. And it was the moment of moments. It's still 26 years later, you know, to me, the most significant WrestleMania moment of all time. It may be one of the most significant wrestling moments of all time. Yeah, I remember calling a 1-900 number because I, I didn't watch WrestleMania three that day. And I, I wanted to find out who won. I wanted to find out if Hogan actually beat Andre the Giant because... Because he had never been beaten before. The old 900 numbers, man. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But. Someday we should do a video about things we miss about pro wrestling. I guarantee those 900 numbers will be way up there. Um, at Sam Circus, have you watched Hogan Knows Best TV show? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. I watched it a lot, actually. Uh, at Not So Smart Marks, what are your thoughts on the Hogan Russo incident in 2000? Uh. It was a work shoot. It was probably a way to get Hogan off of TV because WCW can justify paying him for the amount they were paying him for appearances plus the pay-per-view shares he was getting, uh, considering how shitty business was. Hogan probably didn't want to be associated with the company anymore, so they're like, oh, what's the best way we could possibly do this? I think there was more... W there was some shoot in there, but there was more work than shoot because you always got to remember when you're dealing with Hogan, you don't always know what's real and what's not. Just saying. Same thing with Russo. Uh, at Nathan GT 1997, do you think Hulk Hogan has a bigger ego than Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, I would say so. I think Austin's ego is very underrated. I think he has a tremendous ego, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I, I always resented the fact when people said, well, Hogan is a big fucking ego. Okay, so does Bret Hart, so does Shawn Michaels, so does Stone Cold, so does Rock. These guys, when you get to the top traditionally, they have big fucking egos. Flair does, too. I mean, they all do. Yeah, it's yeah. rare when you have somebody like a taker that doesn't have a huge ego. Um, or even Sting has been talked about doesn't have a massive doesn't have a massive ego, or at least he didn't used to have one. Uh, but Hogan ultimately, I think, had the bigger ego because, frankly, whether Austin fans and Attitude Era fans want to acknowledge it or not, Hogan's a bigger star. Um, so he had the bigger ego to go with it. Now the question becomes... Thanks to all of you that submitted your Hogan questions. I'm disappointed in you that you didn't have more. Um, but with Stingiversary coming up next week, figure it's appropriate to get it out of the way. Let's do one, our 50th themed Q&A on this channel. Let's do one about hashtag Sting or hashtag Stingiversary. No, we'll keep it hashtag Sting. You can ask questions all about Sting's career from his time as a tag team wrestler with the Dingo Warrior, all the way up to his appearances in title matches at Stingiversary. Hashtag Sting, the next subject of our q &A.